welcome to Foundation for Emails. Um, this is the first in the series of videos in working with Foundation for Emails. Particularly, we are going to, for this series, we're going to be using the CSS version. We are not going to be working um, in SAS. So to get started, you're going to need to go to getfoundation/emails.html. This is the home page. Go ahead and bookmark it. Um, you can go ahead and get click on the get started button to get started. You can read a little bit of this documentation about why you would use foundation for emails, but we're going to go ahead and click get started. So like I said, we're going to be working with the CSS version of foundation for emails. So to speed up to getting to the documentation, just click get started with the CSS version. I also recommend downloading the starter kit. There's a bunch of starter files in that starter kit. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. And then I'm going to click get started. So this is a really important page that we're going to be coming back to over and over and over because there is all the documentation in here to getting started with building uh, in foundation for emails. I'm also going to note in this video that I'm going to be coding using Adam. Uh, Adam is an open source text editor. So while you're watching me code, this is what I'm coding in. So to download it, it's adam.io. You can just click the download button and download and unzip. Please note this is your first time using Atom. I would spend some time uh, looking at all the documentation out there. There's a lot of different packages and themes and customizations and things that you can do to make it your editor of choice. Uh, I enjoy the fact that you can customize this. So. Um, and I will be referring to a few packages that you can get. So if you scroll down and see packages, you can go to their um, packages page. There's 9,000 packages at this time. So there's quite a few that you can look through. Some you may use, some you may not use. It's worth coming back because there are, since Atom is open source, there's gonna constantly be new things added to this. So one of the ones I'm going to be using that you will definitely want to use is the browser plugin. I just type in browser and hit search and download for yourself Atom Browser and Atom Browser Plus. To download, you just hit install. Once you've um, installed Atom, you can install both of these packages. This will allow for in Atom live browser previewing. So as we're coding, we can see what our eBlast looks like in the separate window. So now that I'm working in Atom, I'm going to add my project, which would be my eBlast. I'm going to start working on over here into the right, or excuse me, left. Um, so I'm going to navigate to that foundation for emails folder that I downloaded and unzip that file. So this is what, this is what is in the unzipped file for foundations for emails. You get a bunch of templates, which if we just browse through these, um, you can kind of see some of these templates already listed for you. So if you are looking for a nice jumping off point, you can grab some of these and adjust them as you need. You can grab that code. It's all ready for you to work with. And then also within this folder after your templates, which if you don't use your templates, um, you don't have to. They're just a nice jumping off plate. There's your CSS. And this is the foundation for emails CSS that your file needs to link to. So any email that you do build using the foundation for emails framework, you must link to this CSS, particularly this one. This is the foundation um, for web pages, CSS, this is foundation for emails. So this is the one you're gonna be using. So always make sure you have a clean copy of this CSS. Anytime you start a new eBlast project, you can always just go and grab it off of the Zurb for Foundation for Emails website. I like to always grab a clean copy of that code so I know it's um, kind of going from jump. And then you have a blank index.html also within that. So I'm going to go ahead and add that uh, as a project. So I'm going to click Add Folders. I'm going to navigate to that folder on my computer and I'm going to open it up. There we see all the things that we just looked at. So right here is the index.html. And you'll notice that it already has that nice boilerplate already plugged into it. There's really not much happening, but if we jump back into the foundation for emails page, you'll see that that's what that boilerplate looks like as well. 
So let's take a quick look at what that code actually means. So within here, um, you have your declaration, the doc type for your HTML, your head tag, which has a little bit of meta in it, just um, your text or your car set viewport. So this meta tag says that this is going to be responsive. So anything coded in Foundation for Emails is going to be responsive. You have a title tag, and then you also have that link that goes right back to your folder. So this is automatically linked up to your Foundation for Email CSS. Uh, then you have your body tag. And within your um, body tag, you have your table, which would um, be your body for everything in there. And then comes in here where we're gonna, inside this is where we're gonna start building kind of the meat of our eblast designs because there's really nothing here for us right now it's just a boilerplate that allows us to put anything else in so that's the basics of it you really don't need to change much to this except for the title tag um, if you're using an additional external css style sheet you could link it up there as well i just like to work within the one they already give us um, so I don't have too much extra stuff, but if you're working on like a bunch of batch emails or if you're working for a company that it has its own specific styles um, and style sheets to it, maybe you have an external one that your company has defined or for your campaign, anything like that. So let's go ahead and start building out what we need to work with our foundation for CSS. So I'm going to jump back to the foundation for CSS because this is your boilerplate doesn't do anything. And you can always come back to these notes anytime you want to. So thinking about the grid basics and what basically builds that email. All emails need a container. That container holds all the content of your email. Otherwise, the viewports of most emails could go as wide as somebody has them across their whole desktop. Uh, you can't control how people are seeing their email so this is why everything should be in a container. If it's not in a container, you're gonna have massive alignment issues because some parts are gonna look responsive and some things are not gonna be responding right in your, it's, it's going to be a nightmare for you. So you must make sure you put in a container. So let's go ahead and put in that container. I could type this out, but I'm not going to because Foundation makes it so easy to just click copy. Um, and our container is just basically a table. So everything that we're going to be coding with this is tables. Things back to your beginning HTML, everything is done in tables. So I've copied that. I'm going to jump back into Atom. Right in here inside my center tag, I'm going to paste that code. And there is my container. I do have a Beautify script, but I'm just going to run this and just tab this over real quick just for my sake. So there's my container. Now everything that I build must go inside the container. I can't come down here and start pasting things in. It has to be inside my container before I start working. And if you refer back, if you get lost, always come back to Foundations, um, their website, because they will tell you what you need to do. So inside a container, all your content is going to be broken down into rows and columns. So you have to have a container. Inside the container, you must contain rows. Every chunk of information is in a row. If you want to break those rows up into multiple columns of information, then you can put the columns inside the row. So if you think the big box of container, smaller box of row, smaller, and then multiple columns within a row. So inside my container, let's go ahead and build a row. So all you see is table class row, table row, table head. I'm going to go ahead and copy that jump back into my code editor. I'm gonna open up, this is my container. I'm gonna paste in this row. And I'm gonna comment out for myself, end of row. You're gonna notice that this code is gonna get really messy really fast. The biggest problem with any coder working in this especially the CSS version over the SAS version. The SAS version is much, much cleaner. The code is a lot cleaner, is that we're gonna get a lot of just horrible nesting tables all over the place. So make sure that you name your things as is appropriate to you. 
Make sure you're commenting things so you can find where the end of a row is, where the end of a container is, where the end of your columns are at, because otherwise you're going to get lost really, really fast. So we still don't have anything in here. I have a table class of row. Now I wanna build out a little bit more and that's gonna be working with my columns. So now that I've got that, I can divide my layout using columns. And it's important to kind of look at some of these grid basics and see what's happening here. So when I have a column, I have my table class of row then I can open it up and say, all right, now I have one column and it's going to be the full size at or at a small breakpoint. It's going to take up those full 12 columns. So foundation also works in a 12 column grid. So if you're wondering if I if you said I want something to take up the full width, OK, that needs to take up all 12 columns. If you want it to take up half of the width, then it's going to take up six. A third is four. So however, so because four plus four plus four is 12, that's how you define these numbers. So at a small breakpoint, it is taking up all 12 uh, columns. At a large breakpoint, it's taking up six. That's how that math works. That's what these classes mean for small 12, large six. And this is the first of the columns. So if I wanted to have two columns next to each other, which seems a little bit more important, then this one's the first column, this is the last one. So column one, column two. Very exciting. So I'm going to go ahead, I don't need the row in here, I'm going to go ahead and copy out these two columns. And I'll put a little expander in there. And I'll jump back to my code. Actually, erase both of those, I believe. And I've got that pasted in. So now, if you look at this table, table class row, table row, inside my table head tag, I have column one and column two. So let's go ahead and preview this to see what this might look like in a browser. So if you installed the packages that I suggested earlier, you're going to go to, you're just going to right click on it, on your code anywhere, and open in Browser Plus. And that's going to open this on my right side. So I made a rookie mistake. I did preview and nothing was showing. That's because I have to save my code file before anything is going to appear. So save your file, Control or Command S, and then hit refresh up here to refresh your browser page. And here's column one and column two of my eBlast. And then I can test the responsiveness of this. And I can see there at that smaller breakpoint where you can see taking up one column, column one, column two, half and half. And then at that small, now this is taking up the full 12 columns of that eBlast. So those are your grid basics in working with foundation for emails. Next up, we're going to actually work on putting some more interesting content into this eBlast design. So thank you for watching this one, and I will see you on the next one.